Welcome to the Church Wiki Art Center on the campus of WVU, Potomac State College. State fire marshal regulations require that we make you aware of the emergency exits in our auditorium. Please note the exits to the front, sides, and rear of the auditorium should the hall need to be evacuated in an emergency. There are restrooms and water fountains in the main lobby of the building for your comfort and convenience. At this time, please silence all electronic devices to avoid interrupting our events. We thank you for joining us on the campus of WVU, Potomac State College. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 120th commencement ceremony of West Virginia University Potomac State College. If able, please stand as we begin the processional. Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by WVU Potomac State student Alexis Middleton and the Pledge of Allegiance led by campus president Chris Gilmer.
<clears throat> How say can you see the rings on the light? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last sleep. Whose but stripes and bright stars through the perilous sight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rose trees the bold thirsty. That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star single banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Good morning and thank you very much, Lexus. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Mm. 
students, parents, families and friends, faculty, administration, staff, and honored guests, good morning and welcome to the 120th commencement ceremony of West Virginia University Potomac State College. We're honored to have you here as we celebrate our students and their accomplishments. While many things have changed in higher education and at Potomac State College in 120 years, our pride in our students remains strong and true. Students, we hope that your time with us has inspired you, encouraged you, connected you, and developed you. Everyone here, faculty and staff alike, care deeply about your success. Through your hard work and dedication, you have been an inspiration to us, and we are honored to be a part of your journey. At this time, I'd like to introduce our platform party and special guests. Please hold your applause until all are introduced. Dr. Jay Badenhoot, Chair of the Faculty Assembly. Molly Alvaro, Outstanding Faculty of the Year and Bearer of the Academic Maze. Katie Kukendall, Outstanding Student of the Year and Bearer of the Student Mates. Lucas Lamont, President of the Student Government Association. The Honorable Kent Leonhart, West Virginia State Agriculture Commissioner and today's commencement speaker. Phil Douthit, Dean of Academic Affairs. Brady Whipke, Senior Advisor and Chief of Staff to the President. Dr. Kim Colbank, Interim Dean of University Relations and Student Experience. Scott McVicker, Chief Financial Officer. Pam Wilkinson, President of Potomac State College Alumni Association. Lexis Middleton, who just did our beautiful, beautiful Star Spangled Banner. And I'll also introduce uh, members of the President's Party. David Creel, the First Gentleman of Potomac State College. Uh, Karen Denby, our dear friend who's visiting with us today, Commissioner and Mrs. Roger Leatherman, who are our guests today, Chief Sherry St. Clair of the West Virginia University Police, and alumni board members Patty Sykes and John Wilkinson. And I'm Chris Gilmer, the president of WVU Potomac State College. There are other people who need to be recognized today. Without them, our students would not be achieving this seminal moment in their lives. If I'm going to ask a few groups to stand now, and please only stand if you're comfortable doing so. Faculty and staff of WVU Potomac State College, please stand. We thank you for your hard work and dedication to our students and for your commitment to ensuring meaningful, productive, and positive experiences for our students. Parents, spouses, children, family members, grandparents, supportive friends of our graduates, please stand for recognition. You're here to honor one of our graduates today. This is your day too. Graduates, as you're already doing, join me in applauding these people who have supported you every step of your journey and who are here to celebrate you today. Alumni of West Virginia University Potomac State College and the One WVU system, truly, we would not be here without your ongoing contributions to your alma mater. Please stand for recognition, recognition and to receive our gratitude. Alumni, please stay us. A very important moment. I would like to recognize our students and all who are current or former military personnel. These students are wearing red, white, and blue honor cords for today's ceremony. Would these students, along with any other current or former members of our armed forces who are present today, please stand. We honor you for your service. Please stand. And finally, we honor another group of West Virginia University Potomac State College's 
very special first generation students. We have a commitment to helping these students navigate the difficult waters of higher education. These are students who are the first in their family to attend college, and some of them are wearing a first generation soul at today's ceremony. Would you please stand if, like me, you are a first generation college student? Many of you know my story, which is only important for one reason, that it's similar to many of your stories. I'm going to share the short version today for those who do not know it. My mother was quite literally born on the kitchen table of a sharecropper shack at the edge of a cotton field in rural Mississippi, and she got me instead of the college education of her dreams. Most days, I think she thought it was a good trade, though I'm pretty sure there were a few minutes when she wondered whether she would have done better with the college degree. My paternal grandparents gave me a calf on the day I was born, and it grew into a herd of cows that paid for my first community college tuition. My father worked extra shifts to pay for my college textbook. Like the songwriter Jewel says, and like many of you, I am quite literally the accumulation of the dreams of generations and their stories flow through me like holy water. Graduates, hear this from me if you hear nothing else I say today. You too are the accumulation of the dreams of generations. While you've worked hard and should be duly proud of your accomplishments, no one comes to a moment such as this alone. It's a milestone that no one can ever take away from you, but you earned it on the shoulders of generations of people, many of whom you never even met. Pride is important. My message to you today, humility, is even more important. And since humility is important, I go off of script for one moment to offer our graduates one further piece of advice. Sometimes in life, you will get it very right. Those will be good days. Sometimes in life, you'll get it very wrong. Even if you're filled with good intentions and don't have malicious intent, as I've already been called to do once today, Admit it when you get it wrong. Ask for a moment of grace and say, I'm sorry. That may be the very best counsel I could give to you. So many of our graduates work one or more jobs, have young children or aging parents to care for, juggle the challenges of figuring out how to pay the rent and buy textbooks at the same time, deal with the very real worry of how to feed, feed or clothe or provide shelter for your family. How to afford a tank of gas to make it to the final exam. I want you to know it's not lost on me the challenges many of you overcome daily and overcame to be here. And I want you to know even as you look at me and the privilege I represent today, when I was a college student and even long after, I dealt with those same realities. Where I am today is not where I started on a little road to Damascus, not the biblical Damascus, but Damascus, Mississippi, where there wasn't a traffic light or a post office or even a store. Neither is where you are today where you will end, at least not metaphorically. In a moment of fleeting arrogance as a child, I asked my mother this question. Mama, how do you become great? I'll always remember her answer to me. I don't even need to look at notes to hear it. Baby, the only way to become great is just to try to be good every day. You will fail many times, but keep trying. When you fail, just keep trying and let greatness take care of itself. I share my story not because I'm special. To the contrary, I share it because I am not 
special. All that I am, have done, and will do is as a product of those who poured themselves into me. Now, graduates, I challenge you, I implore you to pour yourselves into the service of others. Now, I'm happy to recognize the chair of our faculty assembly, Dr. J. Baden. So, hello graduates. I'm Dr. Jay Badenhoop. I'm faculty assembly chair. That means I've had the privilege of leading and helping faculty this year with their concerns to better serve all of you. During your time at Potomac State, we've tried to impart wisdom and motivate you to learn as much as possible to prepare you for the next step in your life's path. Some of you may have had times of frustration where you just could not understand how to write an essay or solve a math or science problem or explain what led up to a pivotal moment in history or describe the symptoms of schizophrenia. We hope that you felt that you could turn to us for help. Helping students learn is our main reason for being here. It is our passion. Life is a river that sometimes flows smoothly and straight. Sometimes it meanders in different directions and sometimes it encounters rocks and other obstacles. You can choose to be stopped by those obstacles or find a way around or over them as water always does. Your presence here at graduation shows you've already shown that you have what it takes. Your instructors at Potomac State College work to achieve a degree in their discipline and decided that their life goal is to teach knowledge and skills to students. If you set realistic goals and are determined enough to accomplish them, you will find your passion in life and hopefully make a fulfilling career of it as we have. In this society where so much, there's so much murkiness of negative anger, hate, bullying, and discrimination, you can be a beacon of light, treating others as you would like them to treat you with respect, kindness, friendship, and even love. You can make the world a better place. Say something nice to someone or do something good for someone else every day. A smile can lift someone's spirits and it's contagious. We believe in your future. As the doctor in Doctor Who once said, there must be no regrets, no fears, no anxieties. Just go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. Good luck in all that you do. We wish you all success in your careers and lives. Thank you. Our next speaker is Katie Kuykendall, Kuykendall Outstanding Student of the Year. Good morning, family, friends, faculty, staff, honored platform guests, and my fellow graduates. My name is Katie Kirkendall, and I am honored to represent the Potomac State College graduating class of 2023. When I think of PSC, the word that immediately comes to mind is community. Community is defined as a feeling of fellowship with others, 
as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. However, I would like to add to this definition. A community is only as strong as its people, its values, and its beliefs. PSC's values are service, curiosity, respect, accountability, and appreciation. These are characteristics that I see demonstrated daily. When I think of community in relation to PSC, I think of the faculty and staff who have demonstrated their dedication to the education of others. Their availability and accommodations exceeded any preconceptions of what I thought my college experience would be. I think about their willingness to give immediate attention no matter what time of day, via email, in-person meetings, or Zoom. I think of the activities on the quad, workshops, and pop-up events that the faculty and staff orchestrated to help us relieve stress and to become more confident in ourselves and our abilities. I have loved every minute of my time here at PSC, and the more classes I took, the more confident I became in my decision to major in both business and communication. I have known what I wanted to do with my life since I was 11 years old. Reading has been an important aspect of my identity since I was a child. I would become fascinated by the lands and hero heroines that I read about. My imagination would take control, and I would become a part of each story that I read, a trait that I still have today. I have someday to help others become as captivated as I am when reading. That is why my goal is to eventually work in the publishing industry. My time at PSC has brought me closer and closer to achieving that dream. I am making connections and learning under people who have professional experience in the job course that I'm interested in. It seems like yesterday that I found my love of reading, and now I'm on my way to becoming a part of that process. I used to roll my eyes when people would say that time flies, but time really does fly, whether you're having fun or not. I can promise you that stressing over exams, projects, quizzes, and finals is not fun, but the memories that I've made along the way are some that I will look back on for the rest of my life. I remember the friends that I have made and the experiences that I've had during these two amazing years. Time is a thief. I'm 20 years old and I've only just begun to live. I've barely had a life outside of West Virginia. I really do not know who I am yet. And, I will, and we will never truly find who we are if we do not open ourselves up to new opportunities and experiences. So if I could give you any advice from what I have learned here at PSC, it would be to live life now. Stop writing about next week, next month, or next year. Enjoy the now and cherish the memories. Because when we're older, they're all that we'll have. Memories of the things we did, the people we met, and the life that we've lived. I would like to thank my parents for always supporting me with everything that I've decided to do. My friends for being by my side throughout my journey. And I would like to give a very special thank you to one of my professors. This professor has been in my corner since my first day on campus and has gone out of her way to help me succeed. I know that I would not be out here today without this professor. When I came onto this campus, I was lost. I had no idea how or what I needed to do to graduate. She so she to do to do this. But with her help and support, we figured out my schedule together to make my goals happen. I would like to thank Professor Amy Weaver. I would like to thank her for her hard work and dedication to the education of others and for making every person feel valued and respected. Thank you for letting us know. Thank you for letting us know that our opinions matter and we are valued. I would like to thank all of the faculty and staff that I have allowed me to express myself as I am. I guarantee you that every staff member that I've interacted with and every peer that has had any class with me will agree that I am very opinionated and honored regardless of any college. It is our moment to thank you for creating a positive and supporting learning environment, supporting this learning environment that allows me to be myself and encourage you thinking outside the box. This cannot be meant enough. Thank you. You are making a difference, and I am living proof of that. To the graduating class of 2022, fast in the relief and triumph that we feel right now. College is not easy, and if it were, everyone would be here. After all, this long night of study is seemingly in the semesters we have survived. For some of us, this might be our last graduation that we ever had. 
revel in the moment and look forward to the many more experiences you will have. Thank you for all the memories. And here is the class of 2023. We did it. Congratulations and God bless. Thank you. At this time, I would like to welcome the podium to the podium Lucas Lamont, the president of the Student Government Association, who will introduce our keynote speaker. Good morning, everyone. The Honorable Kent Leonhardt is a longtime farmer whose passion for agriculture began at a very young age and grew into a business operation while still serving in the United States Marine Corps. Towards the end of his military career, Mr. Leonhardt bought a farm near Blacksville, West Virginia, that had been abandoned for more than 40 years. It was purchased in 1982, where he still lives today cultivating crops, and since 1997, raising livestock. For 20 years, Ken and his wife, Shirley, have raised sheep, cattle, and goats, and sell hay on the surplus of the Mr. Leonhardt graduated from the University of Missouri with a bachelor's degree in wildlife management. He focused on a variety of courses pertaining to agriculture, natural resources, and environmental protection. While still on active duty, he earned a master's in business management from Central Michigan University. After two decades in the United States Marine Corps, Mr. Leonhardt retired from the military in 1996 as a lieutenant colonel. During that time, he served on multiple service assignments, leading America's men and women during wartime and peace. Among the 10 decorations he received are the Legion of Merit and Combat Action Award. In 2014, Mr. Leonhardt was elected to the West Virginia State Senate in the second senatorial district. At the time, this district was one of the largest and most loyal in the state, containing all or parts of Marshall, Wetzel, Gilmer, Marion, Monongalia, Tyler, Dodge Ridge, Calhoun, and Ritchie Counties. In 2017, he resigned from his position in the Senate after being elected West Virginia Commissioner of Agriculture. He has held that position since January 2017. Mr. Leonhardt is also a member of the Monongalia County Farm. The Leonards have three sons, six grandchildren, and two great grandchildren. Please welcome to the podium, Mr. Kent Leonhardt. Thank you, Lucas. Appreciate that introduction. What a beautiful day. We've got a nice spring day. Uh, and it's just, everything's starting to bloom. And it's, you wonder sometimes how graduations are always in the spring. Is it because it's the birth of new life like we see on a lot of our farms? You know, plants are coming through the soil and uh, new livestock are being born on our farms. It seems to be all just seem to fit together so beautifully. I want to congratulate the students for your achievement today and your graduation and thank the parents and the family and friends that have supported you throughout this entire process. You all are to be commended. I can report to you today, that the state of agriculture in West Virginia is very strong. Farmers markets are up about 300% in the past six years. Nationally last year, livestock numbers were down 4% while in West Virginia, we are up 5,000 head. Our sheep numbers are up, our hog numbers are up as well, and goats. Red meat production is up 50% in the past six years. We've done an awful lot of work on expanding our maple syrup. I think it takes better than Vermont, quite frankly. And we also have honey production that is really uh, growing within the state of West Virginia. And on Monday, just this past Monday, Mountaintop Beverage in Morgantown began production. It's the most modern aseptic milk processing facility in the world, right here in West Virginia. And we hope we use that to spur the dairy industry within West Virginia. We've got huge opportunities in West Virginia on food processing. And guess what, folks? Food processing, since we all have to eat, those jobs 
are recession proof. They're gonna continue on. We're gonna to continue to work towards shortening the distance between where our food is produced to where it's consumed. West Virginia grown means good health for our citizens, good health for our economy because the dollars stay here in our state. And given the high price of energy and the use of fossil fuels, it's really good health for our environment. And there's no other industry that can claim and make the claim for all three, good health for our citizens, good health for the economy, and good health for the environment than West Virginia agriculture. But as you embark on the next stage of your lives, I'm going to suggest, I'm gonna call it ask you to do three things. President Gilmer touched on a couple of those things. I was glad to see. But first, I'm gonna ask you to find a job or a career that you truly love. Second, take some time for yourself and family. And third, take time to volunteer where you see a need. On finding a job you love, we hope it's here in West Virginia, obviously. Many of us in Charleston are working very hard to expand that opportunity. Advice given to Marines as they separate from the services, don't pick where you want to live. If you like the job, you will like the location. I remember when the Marine Corps sent me to 29 Palms, California in the middle of the Mojave Desert. I went kicking and screaming quietly, obviously. And I dreaded going to that assignment. But the reality became I loved the desert and the position. And I learned to love everything else out there at the same time. I even bought a horse. Riding in the desert evenings is quite an experience, especially returning to the stable at sunset or when the desert flowers are blooming in the spring. Enjoy your work. You will find the other pleasures in life wherever you go. Remember, now that you have a degree, how many of you changed majors while in school? <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> I started in pre-vet with a secondary in wildlife management. I eventually dropped that pre-vet thing and joined the Marine Corps because all the, I was near the end of Vietnam and all the Vietnam veterans that were in wildlife were getting the jobs because they had better preference for taking federal jobs. So I said, well, I better join the Marine Corps and get that veteran's preference and in a couple of years we'll get out and I'll go get that job in wildlife. Well, I loved the Marine Corps and I made it a career. I learned so much about people and myself and the world. I was privileged to lead many in peace and war but the only wildlife I ever managed was Marines. But now remember that pre-vet thing I talked about? Guess what? I now have five veterinarians working for me. Don't be afraid to make a change in midlife. My change came when I decided to leave the Marine Corps, retire, and start a farming career at age 42. I guess I learned not to fear change from my father. You should not fear change either, but embrace it with enthusiasm. My father made a lot of changes in his career. His life goal as a young man was to fly. He entered the Naval Flight Program towards the end of World War II. The same year, the same program that President Bush 41 completed a few years earlier ahead of him. But it was a blessing for all. Obviously, the war ended before his training was complete and the program was scaled back. My father was commissioned, sent to sea, and went out to clean up the sea mines the U.S. had left around the Philippines. So not achieving his flying goal, he left the Navy when his time was up, finished college, and then went on to medical school. Now, my father's first practice, general practice office, started in our home. I was getting ready to start school. Our dining room was the examining room and the living room was the waiting room. Patients came through our front, front door. Later, he built a separate office attached to the house. After a number of years, one of the hospitals my dad had patients in asked him to help open the first emergency room in New Jersey. He was to lead a team of five doctors in what would today now be considered a specialized medical field. Well, that only lasted so long. 
at age 42 with four children. My father came home and told my mother he was going back to school as a surgical resident in orthopedics. You see, he was just satisfied with patching people up and passing them off for further treatment and not seeing the end results. My mother was shocked. Going back to college, level income with four kids. I think you all understand what college level income is like, don't you? It worked out. He graduated from his residency the year I graduated from high school. The family survived and he did well. But on my dad's 60th birthday, my mother gave him flying lessons with a note, another dream come true. Now, remember the Mountaintop Beverage Company I mentioned earlier? Well, those are young men in their 40s with young families. They also have a dream and were dissatisfied with the company they worked for. So they started this new adventure and working with my Department of Agriculture and others over the three years plus, their dream was realized this, this week. They had the courage to change. You never know where life's going to take you. Follow your heart. Have the courage of your beliefs and start a career you truly love and it will be good. But don't be afraid to adjust. As to item two, taking time for yourself and family, we all need some time to rejuvenate. Get the pressures of life and work off your mind. Even if you are doing something you truly love, it would be more fulfilling if you put work aside from time to time. I know you're eager to make it your mark, and you will. There's plenty of life ahead of you. And while you're taking time for yourself, take the time for family. They will stand by you more than even your closest friends. They will be there when you need someone else the most. Now, work is where most of the conflict we have in our life arises. I have learned that the only thing difficult in life is people. There are a lot of rules out there that we've got to follow. But isn't it amazing how they are interpreted by others in so many different ways? That's okay. If everybody was the same, it would be a boring world. I will take the aggravation of people not seeing everything my way because we have the joy of people we love and those we interact with in our lives daily. And my third suggestion is to find time for you to volunteer. You have already required, acquired some skills others can use. Believe it or not, you do have time to volunteer. Maybe it's related to your work. Professional organizations need volunteers as well. For me, I started later in life with Farm Bureau and now Operation Open Home. My wife, when we met, was working with professional secretaries international, and now she volunteers at Friends of WVU uh, gift shop in the hospital. We all share a common goal of a better world. Do the right thing and your rewards will come. The happiest people I know are those that take time to help others. Recently and unexpectedly, my wife was awarded a certificate for 2,500 hours of volunteer services for the hospital. I was very proud of her, and I shared that on Facebook. It got more likes than anything I ever did. Sometimes the reward comes later, years later. In my last Marine Corps birthday ball while on active duty, Shirley and I were in Tampa, Florida at U.S. Central Command. The Marines and other officers were all dressed in their finest uniforms in the spouses in evening gowns with tuxedos. A younger Marine, a staff sergeant approached me. He wore a number of medals. From them, I knew he had been in the first Gulf War like I had, but I didn't know him. It was a big command of multi-services and there was no way anyone knew everyone. But this staff sergeant said, Colonel Leonhardt, when I saw you, I just had to introduce you to my wife. You see, sir, when you were my company commander at Fort Meade, that was 12 years earlier, because of what you did for me, I now have a career, wife, and a family. To this day, I do not remember what I did, but something must have clicked for that Marine at that time. You all will have the opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life, be ready to do so. 
We should all make it our goal to pay forward and improve the life of at least one person every year. Can you imagine what a great thing it would be if everyone did so? The surge we see in crime would go away. The drug problem we are witnessing would go away. A good start is making sure you compliment those around you when you see goodness. Don't expect praise for yourself all the time, but I assure you the rewards will come. Always know in your heart that you did the right thing. You have the foundation, you have the proven desire, and hopefully you've listened to me a little bit. I'm gonna ask you to now go forth and do great things. Congratulations again. Have a great day. It is my honor to present the graduating class of 2023 of West Virginia University Potomac State College. As we proceed to the graduates, I ask that you hold your applause to all graduates of Walker Cross the State. Marshall, please bring the first group of graduates forward. Katie. Ann Kirkendall, Social Applied Sciences and Technology, Associate Arts, Communication Studies. <laughs> Lucas James Lamans, Social Applied Science, Business Technology. Emily Brianne Adams, Associate Arts, Criminal Justice Studies. Riley Catherine Adams, Associate Arts, Business Administration. Regan M. Andrews, Associate of Applied Science, Sustainable Agriculture Entrepreneurship. Israel Camilo Ariano, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Information Studies. Mason Patrick Bell, Associate Arts Biology. Sierra E. Ferry, Associate Arts, Business Administration. Sierra G. Bram, Associate Arts, Elementary Education. Calissa Louise Frelsford, Associate Applied Science, Business Technology. Rachel E. Brinkman, Associate Arts, Pre-Veterinary Medicine. Lane Gregory Brown, Associate Arts, Pre-Veterinary Medicine. Caleb Chittister, Associate Arts, General Studies. Carissa Shea Collette, Associate Arts, General Studies.
Heather D. Crawford, Associate Arts, Ag and Extension Education. Raylan M. Crow, Associate Arts Psychology and Associate Arts Pre-Nursing General Studies. Olivia Grace Durst, Associate Arts General Studies. Maria Luisa Elias, Associate Arts Child Development and Family Studies. Hi. Elizabeth Evans, Associate Arts Horticulture, Associate of Applied Science, Sustainable Agriculture, Entrepreneurship. Hi. Jada Marie Fleming, Associate Arts Physical Education. Wesley G. Forbes, Associate Arts, Business Administration. Paige Michael Fouts, Associate Arts, Elementary Education. Aaliyah Elaine Goldison, Associate Arts, Psychology. Marcus Alexander Hahn, Associate Arts, Biology. Thomas Carl Hare, Associate of Applied Science, Criminal Justice Studies. Caitlin Halley, Associate Arts, Pre-Veterinary Medicine. Natalie Jane Halterman, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Information Systems. Marshall James Harper, Associate Arts, Electrical Engineering and Associate Arts, Mathematics. Kobe Wade Hawk, Associate Arts, Preoccupational Therapy. Jonathan Raymond Holloway, Associate Art General Studies. Cheyenne Autumn Nooker, Associate Art Elementary Education. Kaylin Marie Huff, Associate Arts, Pre-Social Work, Associate of Applied Science, Health Sciences. Corey Lee Hudson, Associate Arts, General Studies. Savannah Payton Johnson, Associate Arts, Elementary Education. Deanna Judy, Associate Arts, Wildlife and Fisheries Resources. Harmony Blake. Keister, Associate Applied Science, Health Sciences, Associate Arts, Pre-Nursing, General Studies. Joshua David Kenner, Associate Arts, General Studies. Richard Keith Law, Jr. Associate Arts, Business Administration.
Sydney Lecklider, Associate Arts, General Studies. Chesney Free Liget, Associate Arts, Child Development, Family Studies. Brandon Matthew Liller, Associate Arts, General Studies. Madeline Elizabeth Martin, Associate Arts, Biology. Eliza D. Martinez Toro, Associate Arts, Secondary Education, Associate Arts, General Studies. Reagan McKenzie, Associate Arts, General Studies. Allison Jade Miller, Associate Arts, Elementary Education. Reagan Dawn Miller, Associate Arts, Elementary Education. Kimberly Grace Minnick, Associate Arts, General Studies. Adam Nesselroth, Associate Arts, Business Administration, Associate of Applied Science, Business Technology. Benjamin Nestor, Associate Arts, Civil Engineering, Associate Arts, Mathematics. <laughs> Carl Moria Jorge, Associate Arts, Electrical Engineering. Kelsey Nicole O'Neill, Associate of Applied Science, Health Sciences. Aiden Heron, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Information Systems. Nathan Ricardo Park, Associate Arts, Psychology. Caitlin B. Patterson, Associate Arts, Animal Science. Jeffrey Scott Paul. Associate Arts, General Studies. <laughs> Alexandria Denise Redmond, <laughs> Associate Arts, General Studies. <laughs> Timothy Enoch. Rydell, Associate Arts, Criminology. Brady Andrew Rhodes, Associate Arts, Wildlife and Fisheries Resources. Lindsay Rinker. Associate Arts, Animal Science, Associate Arts, Agribusiness Management, Associate Arts, Ag and Extension Education. <laughs> Jacob Thomas Ritchie, Associate Arts, Physical Education, Sport Management. <laughs> Emma Rose Scarborough, Associate Arts, General Studies. Applied. 
Elena Blair C, Associate Arts Elementary Education. Christopher Douglas Shepherd, Associate Arts General Studies. <laughs> Kenneth Clyde Sibley Jr., Associate of Applied Science, Criminal Justice Studies. <laughs> Nicholas Silva, Associate Arts. Physical Education, Sport Management. Woo! Sarah Kate Sion, Associate Arts, Wildlife and Fisheries Resources, Associate Arts, Recreation and Parks. Jennifer Nicole Smith, Associate of Applied Science, Business Technology, Associate Arts, Business Administration. Sarah Smith, Associate Arts, Agribusiness Management. Lakin Lee Strickland, Associate Arts, Agribusiness Management. Caitlin N. Thornton, Associate Applied Science, Business Technology. Sarah Elizabeth Wharton, Associate Arts, Pre-Nursing General Studies. Emma Grace Wilt, Associate Arts, Elementary Education. And now we start our bachelor's degrees. Jacob T. Armentrout, Bachelor of Applied Science in Computer Information Systems. Chase Nicholas Alt. Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Lance Avery Barb, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Tyre Sean Barmore, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Tyson Harlan Beard, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. <laughs> Jacob Charles Pfizer, Bachelor of Applied Science, Business Management. John Edgar Douthat, Bachelor of Applied Science, Computer Information System. Elizabeth Ressi Dove, Bachelor of Applied Science, Business Management. Diamond Elena Irvin, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Michelle E. Galindo, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Tucker. Helmanac, Bachelor of Applied Science, Business Management. <laughs> Bethany Nicole Holly, Associate of Applied Science and Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice.
Brian Douglas Lowry, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Evan James Moreland, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Adam, I'm oh, sorry, Adrian Nicole Nestor, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Caitlin Danielle Nine, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Nicole D. Nottingham, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Colby Jamil Rogers, Bachelor of Applied Science, Business Management. Tiffany A. Sentman, Bachelor of Applied Science, Business Management. Logan Christopher Smith, Bachelor of Applied Science, Criminal Justice. Alexander Brent Stevenson. Regents Bachelor of Arts. Jocelyn Lee Tasker, Bachelor of Applied Science, Business Management. Drew Colin Wade, Regents Bachelor of Arts. Shannon Michelle White, Regent, Bachelor of Arts. Sarah Virginia Stillmeyer, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Ashley Marie Burgess, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Kristen Nicole Carnell, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Mackenzie Faith. Cook, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Jaden Lee Corbin, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Allison Marie Crow, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Aslan McKenna Didowick, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Mariah Hope Durr, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Molly Eiler, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Aubrey Jean Skyhan, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Stacy Gallant, 
Bachelor of Science, Nursing. <laughs> Matea Rose Gambini, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Avery McKenzie Kessner, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Caitlin Nicole Rasnick, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Caitlin Faith Rex Rose, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Hannah May Streety, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Hannah Sophie Zabidden, Bachelor of Science, Nursing. Will the graduating class of 2023 please stand? President Gilmer, I certify that these candidates of the class of 2023 have met the requirements for graduation set by West Virginia University Potomac State College in the field of study designated for the degrees of Associate of Arts, Associate of Applied Science, Bachelor of Applied Science, Regents Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Therefore, I recommend they be declared graduated. Thank you, Dean Dowson. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for with greetings from President E. Gordon Gee and Provost Marianne Reed and the Board of Governors. By the virtue of the authority vested in me as President of West Virginia University Potomac State College, I now confer upon these candidates to meet all requirements, the degrees of Associate of Arts, Associate of Applied Science, Bachelor of Applied Science, Regents Bachelor of Art, and Bachelor of Science in Nursing with all the rights, privileges, and honors thereunto appertaining to all assembled. I believe it is now time for this hallowed ceremony to take on a different character as we cheer, maybe even offer a few deserved hoots and hollers for our graduates. As graduates, you may now move your tassels from the right side to the left side of your graduation hall. You may now be seated. Please welcome Pam Wilkinson, president of the PSC Alumni Association to the podium, who will greet you as new alumni. Greetings to the class of 2023. As president of the Potomac State College Alumni Association, and on behalf of the entire board of directors, it is my great pleasure to welcome each of you to our alumni association family. As you begin the next steps in your life, no matter where those steps take you, remember you will always be part of Potomac State College and the alumni association. One of the alumni association's main goals 
is to help you stay connected with your fellow graduates, as well as those who have attended before you and those who will come after. On behalf of the Potomac State College Alumni Association, congratulations, class of 2023. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors and hope to meet many of you at future alumni events online at the Potomac State College Alumni Association Facebook page and at the quarterly alumni meetings. President Gilmer will now give the closing message to the graduates. Thank you, Pam. What a truly amazing morning leading into an afternoon and a future filled with great promise for our graduates. Thank you all for taking part. After the recessional, graduates, family members, and guests are invited to the reception on the plaza of Kirk McKee Art Center. The stage and PSC backdrop will be available for you to take graduate photos after the platform party photos have been taken. I think my final words to you today ought to be what I read on the graduation cap of your own student government president, be brave and be you. At this time, please stand and join us in the singing of Country Roads led by Lexus Middleton. The lyrics are in the back of your program. And after this song, please remain standing if able for the recessional. And the Lexus is going to come and help us sing our favorite song.